Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to go over a biochemical test that's very, very simple, probably the simplest one we're going to cover the entire semester, and this is P-Agar, and P is an acronym for phenyl ethyl alcohol, which is going to be a chemical that's going to be embedded into this agar. Now, appearance-wise, this agar looks very similar to TSA, but it's not a simple growth medium. It's a selective medium, okay? And it's selective because it has this chemical called phenyl ethyl alcohol. What this chemical does is it inhibits the growth of gram-negative bacteria. Okay, so in other words, if you were to plate gram-negative bacteria such as E. coli on P. agar, you would not expect to see a significant amount of growth. There may be a marginal amount of growth, a very small amount, but not really to any significant extent. However, if you plated a gram-positive bacteria on here such as Staphylococcus aureus, you should expect a large amount of growth. Okay, so it's selective because it selects for gram-positive bacteria to grow. Now, one important thing about P. agar is that you can still have some growth of gram-negative bacteria. It's not bactericidal, meaning it doesn't actually kill the bacteria. It inhibits their growth. And so sometimes if you have here, it says not gram-positive, but this is essentially gram-negative. Sometimes you would see a little bit of growth there, but it shouldn't be anything compared to what you see for the gram-positive growth, which is in this quadrant of the plate over here. You can see many, many, many colonies uh, smeared over here in the gram-positive area. And that's what we expect, much more growth in the gram-positive uh, area than we would expect in the gram-negative area. Okay, and so that's what P. agar does. It really just gives you the gram reaction. Um, but the thing that you have to realize is that you may see a little bit of growth in an area where it's gram negative. Okay, there's just going to be much more growth in the area where there's gram positive bacteria. And generally when we do this test, we're only going to plate one species of bacteria. So either the entire plate's going to have a lot of bacteria, in which case it's gram positive, or there's going to be very little bacteria over the whole plate, in which case it would be gram negative. Now, one thing uh, as an aside that we'll use this for later in the semester when we get our unknown bacteria and we have to identify them using a bunch of tests, we'll actually do three separate tests to actually confirm the gram reaction since that's very important. That's where we start when we identify a bacteria. We need to know if it's gram positive or negative. And those three tests are one going to be obviously the gram stain itself, which also gives us the cell shape. Two, we'll use McConkie agar. That's a very reliable test that not only gives us the gram stain, but also gives us the lactose reaction. And then there's this test, which is a third form of confirmation of the gram reaction. But this test only gives you the gram reaction, doesn't give anything else. Okay, so that's what P. agar is in short. In conclusion, it really just tells you the gram reaction. If there's a lot of growth, such as over here on the right quadrant, it's a gram positive bacteria. If there's not a lot of growth, either none or very little, then it's considered gram negative. Hopefully this makes sense to you. Very simple concept. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.